Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Good morning as we get ourselves together, get ourselves in the mode of worship. Let's look to him, put aside all distraction, anything that's going to hinder our praise, hinder our worship this morning, wherever you are. We're entering into the presence of the Lord. He requires our attention. We owe it unto him. And as you're getting yourselves together, turn, into your Bi turn your Bibles to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. And this is my favorite part. This is God talking to us. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Let us pray. I know what you're facing today, what you're up against, but God is able. He said, call upon me and I'll answer him. He will be with you in trouble. He'll deliver you and honor you. A long life, he'll satisfy you. He'll show you his salvation. So as we enter into his presence, whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is that you're up against, just lay it at his feet because he's there. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, oh God, that you look beyond our faults and you saw our needs this morning, oh Father. We thank you, O oh God, that we could have been elsewhere, but you woke us up this morning, O oh Father, and you set us, O oh God, on our way, and we're in our right minds this morning, O oh Father, and even though some of us may feel like we're not really in our right minds, we're declaring, O oh God, that we are in our right minds this morning. We thank you, O oh God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor this morning, O oh Father. You are the Alpha and the Omega this morning, O oh God. There's none like you, none before you, none after you, none to come, O oh Father God. And as we look to you this morning, O oh God, we thank you because you are the Jehovah Jireh this morning, O oh God. You are our Jehovah Rapha this morning, oh God. God, you said, call upon me. Call upon you. You will hear and answer us, oh God. You will show us great and mighty things this morning, oh Father God. God, we know that we're not worthy to come before you, oh Father, because our righteousness is like filthy rags this morning. 
search your hearts, search your minds this morning, oh God. Whatever is not of you, oh Father God, cleanse us, strip it away from us, purify us this morning, oh God, purge us this morning, oh Father. God, we want to be more and more like you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we declare today, oh Father God, that the enemy is under our feet this morning. We trample him underfoot this morning, oh God. You said a thousand may fall, oh God, but none may come near us this morning, oh God. We decree and we declare, oh Father, Spirit of the living God, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper this morning. No weapon that is formed against your people. In the name of Jesus, God, we call upon you this morning. We're hungry for you, oh God. We're thirsty for you, oh Father. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh in this place, oh Father. Move among us, oh God. Move mightily today, oh God. Move in the praise steam, oh God. Move through our bishop this morning. Do a new thing this morning, oh God. A new thing, oh Father. God, we call upon you. You are the God that answers with fire this morning. You are not asleep this morning. You are not deaf, oh God. You hear our cry. You hear our plea this morning, oh Father God, while in others you are calling this morning, do not pass Grace Temple by this morning. Spirit of the living God, move in this place. Move in this place. Lion of Judah, roar through Grace Temple today. Lion of Judah, move this morning, oh God. We're calling upon you, oh Father God. Send your fire this morning, oh God. Rain upon us this morning, oh God. We need you today, oh Father God. We're desperate for you, oh Father. Hear our hearts cry this morning, oh God. We're hungry for you, oh God. Move through every pew this morning, oh God. Touch every life, oh God, that's represented in this house. Every life, oh God, that's under the sound of my voice, oh God. Wherever we are today, oh God, arrest us this morning, oh Father God. Your will be done in our lives this morning, oh Father. God, do a new thing this morning. Do a new thing this morning. Move through your man's servant this morning, oh God. Move, oh Father God, through your people. We're desperate for you. We're hungry for you, oh God. A closer walk with you this morning, oh Father God. That's our heart desire, oh God. And Father God, we pray that you'll inhabit the praises of your people this morning, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh Father God, that when we open up our mouths this morning and we give you our praise, we give you our worship, we give you the fruits of our lip this morning, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, it'll be a sweet smelling fragrance to you this morning, oh God. We're hungry for you, oh Father. We're desperate for you today, oh God. And we thank you, oh Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We call upon that name, that great name, the name above all names, the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, O oh God, that we belong to you, O oh Father, and none can pluck us from your hands this morning, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise, and we magnify your name because you are God and God alone this morning. And as we make welcome the praise team who's going to help us ushering the presence of the Lord, we know that you are already here, oh God. We thank you for your presence because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty, liberty, liberty in the name of Jesus. Church of God, open up your mouth this morning. Give him a praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph this morning. We're operating from a place of victory this morning. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him praise. We give him praise. We give him praise. Such a powerful prayer this morning. Hallelujah. And so this morning, we just want to welcome one and all to Grace Temple Church. Praise God, our Bishop Ron Dietrich. Hallelujah. We welcome our Bishop this morning. Come by, let's put your hands together. Oh, my God. First Lady, 
Um, I, I, I welcome her in her absence this morning. Come on. She's somewhere around, right? To God be the glory. YouTube, Facebook, we welcome you, Grace Temple. We welcome you. Just big up yourself this morning, Grace Temple. Big up yourself. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. No better place to be than in the house of the Lord. What a better way to start the week. My God. So many things the enemy has plot, you know, but we know that our God is bigger than all these problems that will be facing us as we go through this week. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We're going to put our hands together and we're going to sing. We're going to give God thanks, praise, glory, and adoration. Big up yourself, musician. Big up yourself. My God. Hallelujah. We're going to give thanks this morning. YouTube, just rock your body for Jesus. Hey, oh God, woo! Mm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let's do that one more time. Oh, give thanks. Come on. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He. Is oh, give good. thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy, worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy, worthy. For He is good. Yes, He. Is. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, oh give is thanks, good. oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes he is good, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks oh, unto the, oh, the, the, the Lord, for He is for good. He is good. Yes, he yes, He is good. Is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, he for is He, good. for He is worthy, worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy, worthy. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he 
to know your ways when you lead me Jesus I will follow when you call me father I will answer oh my lord oh my lord please teach me how to know your way my soul to the bleeding lamb my soul says yes hallelujah 
we bow before you, God. We worship you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. You're a consuming fire. Hallelujah. We want your awesome presence to fill this room this morning. Hallelujah. As we bow and we worship you. Hallelujah. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. him bow down and worship him enter in Worship, just worship. His presence is in this place. Come on, come on, open up your mouth and give him worship, 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 worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Mm. We worship the Lord, we worship the Lord, we worship the Lord. Consuming fire, consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this room. This is holy ground.
can bow. Oh, glory to God. Bow down. Anybody want to bow down to him this morning? This is holy ground. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. Holy ground. Hallelujah. In his presence, there is fullness of joy at his right hand. Pleasures forever. My God, ever will shut up forever. Forever. Forever more. Forever more. Forever more. Forever more. Forever more. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is where you're gonna lay your burdens. Lay your burdens on holy ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus. Holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Bishop at this time. This is holy Kemoshata. Hey! This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. People of God, open up your mouth and worship. It's holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy, holy ground. Come on, come on, come on. This is, this is holy ground. Holy ground. Come on, worship. This is holy ground. Come on. Worship, worship, worship all over this place. This is holy oh God, we love you. God, we bless you. This is holy ground. This is holy so we bow down. We bow down, Lord. We bow down and worship you. You alone are worthy. Come and bow. You alone are worthy. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, all over this place. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Come on. Put your hands together and give him praise. Because God is worthy. Worthy of all the glory and the honor that's due to his name. God, we bless you today. We adore you today. There's no one like you. You alone are God all by yourself we worship you and you alone your name is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same his name is worthy come on jesus you're worthy jesus we honor you jesus we bless you jesus we magnify you there's nobody like you we lift you up. Hallelujah. Isaiah said, I saw him high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. God, we love you. 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 From the bottom of our hearts to the depths of our souls. Our soul says yes. Are you saying yes to God today? Yes to his will yes to his way there's nobody like him come on he alone is worthy ah uh, he woke you up this morning come on in here started you on your way jesus jesus i think we need to take it to another level i think we need to take worship to another level come on come on come on if you feel uncomfortable with worship It means something is wrong because this, this is holy ground 
where the presence of God is is holy come on and worship God, we honor you. God, we bless you. There's none like you, Jesus. So come and bow down. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God is good, y'all. God is good. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is is worthy to be praised amen god is good he is a good god he's a faithful god amen he is a, a right now god he's an immediate god amen he's a he's a, a altogether wonderful and whatever we need from god god is able to supply it amen amen he supplies our needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus all right, God bless you. You may be seated. We're just uh, grateful that you're here today, and, and we're thankful that God has allowed us this wonderful privilege and uh, tremendous opportunity to be in his house. Amen. More importantly, to be in his presence, because it, it makes no sense that we go anywhere that God is not. Y'all with me? Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but I've, I've gotten to a point in my walk with God where I cannot, I shall not, I will not tread anywhere without God being there with me. Amen. And so I'm just grateful that I'm here today and, and God is here with me. Amen. I'm grateful for all of you that are here. We thank God for this wonderful privilege uh, to be in his house, to be in his presence one more time. Uh, we do want to say thank you to everyone that's out there on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitch, um, the church's website. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. How many are ready for the word? Let's get to the word, shall we? Uh, turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I will not be too long. You know, I'm not, I'm not normally long, am I? Am I? You think half an hour of sermon is, is too long? Huh? Are y'all acting like it's too long? I think once we start hitting an hour, an hour and a half, is that's dead and long. But 45 minutes is okay. Amen? All right, let's, let's look at uh, this word, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse nine, verses 9 and verse 10. You found it? Say amen. Therefore, we make it our aim. We make it our what? Our aim, our goal, our determination, our purpose whether present or absent, that uh, to be well-pleasing to him. So our aim is to what? Please God. Y'all see that? That's what, at least that's what I got from that, right? Look at verse 10. For we must all, this is why we're going to please God. This is the reason we make it our aim to please God. Because we must all, one day, appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in his body according to what he, that person, has done, whether good or bad. So we will receive 
a reward based upon what we have done. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. May he sanctify it within our hearts that we may mature in God through his infallible word. Verse 10, for we must all one day appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I'd like to use for a subject an appointment with God. An appointment with God. You may be seated. In chapter 5, the apostle is dealing with the very, uh, think, a very serious question of what happens to a child of God, a Christian, at the moment of death. And we know the soul leaves the body, and we know that in the last day, the body will be resurrected. But what happens in the meantime? What is the intermediate state of a departed believer? And make no mistake about it, all of us, we talked about this last week, and I hope it's not too morbid for you, but all of us one day will die. In fact, all of us are dying as we are here today. Paul says in 4.16, he says, Our outward man is what? Perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And from the moment we are born, we begin to die. We start down a path that will inevitably lead us to our grave. Are you all with me? And so as a result of this, our focus as Christians, I want you to listen to me because this is important. Our focus must be, well, first of all, it must not be just about this life, the life that we're living here today. Our focus should be also on what is to come. Are you with me? So we live today based upon what we know is to come. Uh, Paul said in 4.18, he says, we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. But the things that are not seen are eternal. So we live our lives today based upon what is to come. What is to come is eternity. And maybe there are some uh, in, in Paul's uh, day in the Corinthian church that were concerned about the intermediate state of believers between death and the resurrection. And, and here in verse 1 of chapter 5, Paul assures them that if our earthly house, our physical bodies, is destroyed, then we have a building from God. We talked about this last week. And, and what he's doing, he's com he compares this life to living in a tent. And then at the point of death, we move into our eternal home. You remember. And he describes death not as uh, the soul being unclothed, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. You remember. Then in verse 5, look at verse 5. Paul confirms, he confirms to us that it is God who has prepared us for this very thing. Glory to God. Now, this is God's work and God's plan uh, for us that uh, stretches from eternity to eternity. How many know that God has a plan for us? He chose us in eternity past uh, and will glorify us in eternity future. But for now, we are somewhere in between. And yet God confirms his promise in that he has given us the spirit as a guarantee. That's what the word says. And so we, uh, we can be confident that, uh, and we can walk by faith and not by sight. Because God has guaranteed that, amen, we will spend eternity with him. Now in verse 8, he gives us some comfort concerning death. 
Now Paul does, and he says that we are confident, even well pleased, he said, or happy, that to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now when a believer dies, when a child of God dies, they don't fall into a spiritual coma and, and soul sleep until the resurrection. That's not what happens. And listen, we will not be unclothed or unhoused uh, by some, uh, with, you know, and, 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 and become some, some ghost, some uh, ethereal spirit that's wandering uh, the earth and floating uh, in the atmosphere. That's not who we are when we die. Rather, the Bible says we will be present with the Lord. Somebody ought to be encouraged by that. We know that death is inevitable. We know that death, amen, will one day knock at our, our doors. But the, 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 the promise that God made is that we will be present with him at the moment of death. Now, in today's text, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verses 9 through 11, Paul teaches us about the implication of being present with the Lord. And I want you to listen to me because before you know it, this will be over. He, he, he tells us what will happen when we're present with God uh, after we die. And, and what we believe then should determine how we live. Are you with me? We live our lives today based upon what we know will happen tomorrow. Now, Christians should not look at, at Bible study and, and theology as, as just a, an academic exercise. You know, just something you do and something you learn. You know a lot of people that knows the Bible from back to front, but that still don't know enough to live for God. I wish I had some help. And, and so it's, it should not be just an academic exercise. Everything we learn from God's word, listen, everything we know from God's word has a direct bearing on how we understand and live in this world. Because we know that one day, come on, we will close our eyes and, and uh, on this life and open our eyes in the presence of God, Jesus Amen. Uh, uh, we, we should uh, know that because of him and because of his goodness and because of the plans that he has for our lives, our focus should be on him and him alone. In other words, we should live for Jesus because we know that one day we will spend eternity with him. And so uh, we should have an understanding of our future judgment and, uh, uh, you know, a reverential fear for God. A lot of people don't fear God anymore. How many know what I'm talking about? A lot of people, listen, you heard the other day how uh, some, some robbers just came in a church and, 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 and stick up the, the, the preacher, rob him in the middle of his preaching. Come on in here. Folks don't fear God. God anymore. Oh, wish I had some real people with me today. And so uh, the Bible says that we should have a, a, a reverential fear for God. And so let's divide this text along those lines, shall we? First of all, our focus should be what? We talked about this at the beginning. Our focus should be pleasing God. Everyone who's saved, everyone who knows God, you should understand that you're living to please God. Verse 9 says, uh, if you switch it, come on, switch it with me, work with me. The first item should be what? Oh, it, it was switched, okay. Now look at verse 9. Therefore, it says we make it our what? Our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well, pleasing to God. And what, look at that word, therefore. Therefore takes us back to the context of the previous uh, verses, right? And we know that to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with God. And that's what the previous verse tells us. And Paul had no fear of death. In fact, he looked forward to dying. He looked forward to departing and being with Christ. But in the meantime, somebody say in, in the meantime. 
in between time with, with, with the time that Paul had left uh, in this world, he had an overarching uh, focus and an aim or a goal. And we can learn from Paul. What was Paul's focus? What was Paul's aim? What was his goal? Watch this. Look at verse 9. We make it our what? Our aim whether to be present or absent, to be well-pleasing to God. So while we're waiting, amen, to open our eyes in eternity, our, our goal is to please God. Everything we do should be to please God. Our focus, our aim was to, amen, to please God in all things. And I want you to look closely at that phrase because I don't want to move off too quick. It says, we make it our aim. The King James Version says we labor. Uh, the Greek word is, is really a, a compound of, of filio, which is love, and time, which means honor or honorable. And so this literally means to honor or, or to love honor. Are you with me, somebody? I'm going somewhere. It is a real word in the New Testament, and it, it only is used two times in the New Testament. Uh, uh, one other passage is, is 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 11. It translates inspire. Uh, look at what the verse says. It says that you also aspire to lead a what? Quiet life to mind your own business. Yeah, the Bible said that. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Then in Romans 15 verse 20 uh, translates it aim. And so that we have made it our aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ uh, was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. So Paul had an aim. He had an aspiration. He had a goal, a focus of being pleasing to God. And we might just as easily translate this word ambition. Because uh, the NASV uh, says it's, it, it's, it's translated ambition. We don't usually pair ambition uh, with our faith. Uh, because the English word ambition comes from a Latin word, did you know, which comes from a verb which means to go around. And so it, it describes Roman politicians of all people who would go around drumming up votes. And, and this is the season for it. Amen. And so it's no wonder the word uh, became synonymous with unscrupulous and unprincipled and corrupt people. Uh, even today, we think of uh, an ambitious person as a self-promoter. Come on in here. Someone who looks out for himself first and foremost. But as believers, we are not to satisfy our own ambition. We are not to promote ourselves. Come on in here. We ought to be ambitious, yes. We ought to be ambitious, though, in serving the Lord Jesus. Now, our aim and our focus is to be well-pleasing to God. And so it, it is our focus to be well-pleasing. And if that's the focus, uh, what does... Uh, that really means specifically. First of all, it does not mean to, to strive to be accepted by God as inferred by the King James Version because all genuine Christians, believe it or not, all genuine Christians already accepted, a, is accepted by God and know that they are children of God. So we don't need to be accepted again because God has already accepted us. Ephesians 1, 5 and 6 says, having predestined us, amen, to the adoptions of son by Jesus uh, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, by which, watch this, he has made us accepted in the beloved. How many know that God has already accepted you? Oh, I wish I had some real people. Uh, maybe somebody saying, well, preacher, I don't think so because I'm not perfect. I'm, I, I'm, I have some unscrupulous ways about me. I'm, I'm trying to get better, but, but I, I, I can't seem to shake it sometimes. Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. God has already accepted you. 
Uh, uh, but listen, Jesus, by virtue of his sacrificial death on the cross and his resurrection, he has made us accepted in the beloved, uh, the people of God. Come on in here. He bore our sins for us. Uh, it means that he has accepted us. Uh, verse 21 says, for he, amen, made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He clothed us in his righteousness. So that tells me he has accepted us. So by virtue of that, we are truly accepted in the beloved. Now the beloved is referring to the family of God. We are accepted in the family of God. I like Isaiah 10, uh, 61 verse 10 that says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Now, make no mistake about it we are accepted by God in Christ now, Jesus covers our sins he has robed us amen with a cloth or with a robe of righteousness now, and he has enabled us to stand before God now, every one of us has an appointment with God someday and what's important is how we're clothed when we stand before God. See, this is our position and our standing before God. But watch this. To be well-pleasing to him is different from being accepted by him. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? I want you to watch this. Let me take my time because you need to get this. Even though... Uh, in our position, in our standing, we're accepted by God, but uh, our practice should be to please God. Even though God has already accepted us, there's still some people that are not pleasing to God. Are y'all with me, somebody? Uh, pleasing him should be our state. It should be the way we live. Paul said it in, in the beginning, right? He said, my aim is to what? Please God. Now, oh, somebody ought to listen to me. Now, and so we, we see here that it is quite possible to be accepted by God and still not be pleasing to God. Yeah. Some, some of you look confused by my statement, so let me illustrate it another way. I have a son, right? Chris. What's up, Chris? He is God's gift to me, and he's God's gift to, to my wife. Are y'all with me, somebody? He came from our bodies. He is most precious to us. There's nothing that we would not sacrifice for Chris. Most importantly, nothing can change our relationship with our son. Oh, I wish I had somebody who knew where I was going. Listen, no matter what he does or where he goes, he will always be our son. Are y'all with me? This is his position. This is his standing. No matter what I do, no matter where I go, I am a child of God. Nothing can change that. Oh, I wish I had some help in here, somebody. However, if, it, if, if I am not content with the fact that he will always be my son, I want him to be a well pleasing son I don't just want him to be my son I want him to be a son in whom glory to God somebody's not getting it Jesus I want him to obey my commands I, I want Chris to be uh, to apply his mind to his studies and make good grades I want him to select friends that are good I want him to make wise choices. I, I want him to be diligent in his own relationships with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me say publicly that Chris is indeed well-pleasing uh, to me. And I'm very proud and I'm thankful to God for him. But you get my point, right? 
all believers are accepted by God and have a perfect standing before God through Jesus. Not because of what we did, but because of what he did for us on the cross. My standing with God is okay. My standing with God is all right because of what he did for me on the cross. And through Jesus, I have a perfect standing before God. And there are times in my life, though, when I'm not well-pleasing to God. So to be well-pleasing is to obey the will and the word of God. It, it is not enough to be a Christian. Oh, I wish I had some people. But we are to seek to please God by the way we live our lives. A lot of people are saved, but God is not pleased with them. Ah, uh, uh, come on in here, somebody. Y'all don't believe me, right? Watch this, Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3, 23. And whatever you do, do it what? Heartily as unto the Lord and not as to men and Matthew 6 33 but seek ye what first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and then all other things will be added to you notice that we are to please God uh, Paul says whether present or absent and so uh, the context this seemed to mean whether we live or whether we die whether we live out a long life or whether we die very soon we ought to please God it makes no difference we should desire to please him in every stage of our lives now, Romans 14 verse 8 says for if we live we live to the Lord and if we die we die to the Lord therefore we live Live or die, we are the Lord's. Now, First uh, Thessalonians five ten says that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Y'all see the pattern, don't you? Some younger people have the idea that when they get older, that's when they're going to serve the Lord. They, they say, well, after high school or, or after college or after they marry or after they, they have children, amen, or when they reach 30, that's when they're going to serve God none of us know the length of our days are you with me somebody and so we ought to do what we can to be well pleasing to God when right here right now we get up in the morning we should please God we drive in our cars we should drive to please God we open our mouths to talk to one another it should be pleasing to God. We should make it our aim to please God. Are y'all with me somebody? And so we must not be filled with selfish ambition to, to make a name for ourselves, to be noticed or even recognized. Rather, we need godly ambition. Look at your neighbor, tell him you need some godly ambition. Uh, to make, amen, come on, uh, to make whatever you do pleasing to God, uh, to glorify God. Uh, Paul says here uh, in verse 10, which brings us to the second part uh, of our future. Uh, it talks about what does our future have in store for us? Uh, where will it take us? Uh, so the future is this. Uh, our future eventually, I don't care, uh, our who you are, how old you are, when you die, one day you'll end up at the judgment seat of Christ. If we are well pleasing to God, the future we look forward to is to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Second Corinthians 5 verse 10, it says, for we must all do what? 
appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether it's good or bad. And so Paul's focus was to be pleasing to God uh, because he understood uh, he would appear one day before the judgment seat of Christ. But notice very carefully here that it is not only Paul who must appear, but the Bible says that we must all, come on, tell somebody all of us, uh, tell somebody all of we uh, must appear before the judgment seat of Christ because some of y'all understand that. Now, uh, before we dig in a little deeper, uh, I want you to understand what is the judgment seat of Christ. Now, uh, I, I want you to listen to me very carefully. This is important. Judgment is a prominent theme in the Bible, isn't it? Now, throughout the scriptures, in, in fact, there are at least 72 references to judgment in the Bible, in the New Testament alone. And while there are many judgments that are referenced in the New Testament, in the scripture, there are only two primary judgments. Uh, uh, they are the judgment seat of Christ, uh, and there, the, there is the great white throne judgment. Now, now the judgment seat of Christ is for believers. Now, it's for those of us who are saved. Uh, the great white throne judgment, on the other hand, are for unbelievers. Now, now judgment seat, it translates from a Greek word, bima, uh, which is the most basic definition uh, that describes a raised platform. Like, I'm standing on a, a, a raised platform right now. I'm on a bima. Are y'all with me, somebody? Now, when athletes, back in the Isthmus games, when they would run and win, uh, they would place them on a raised platform, which was called a bima. Now, now in the Greek the culture the bema is used in two ways first of all it describes a place of reward now athletes uh, uh, that held amen that participated in the Corinthian games would stand before the bema and the judge of the games would adore them with a victor's crown or a, a garland wreath are you with me somebody now the second bema is described as a place of judgment. Now, the New Testament speaks of the judgment seat of Pilate and Herod and, and Festus. Now, uh, the, in, in, in Corinth, Paul was brought before the judgment seat of uh, Gallio, you remember, uh, on charges of insurrection. Now, in this case, the accused had his deeds examined by a judge and was either uh, exonerated or indicted. Now, now the judgment seat of Christ uh, is also mentioned in Romans 14 verse 10. And I'm going somewhere. Look at it. It says, but why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For watch this. We shall all one day stand before the judgment or the bema seat of Christ. Christ. And even though the word beam is not used in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 15 through 11, it obviously teaches us about the same future. Uh, but let's break down very quickly before I go. Uh, 10, uh, uh, in verse 10, uh, the order of the the bema seat or, or what the judgment seat means for us. First of all, the judgment seat is uh, of Christ is certain because the Bible says we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, we have no option. We have no choice in the matter. Now, uh, you choose to come to worship this morning. You, you could have stayed home or you could have done something else. Now, once I was called to, anyone ever been called to jury duty before? Huh? Once I was called to jury duty uh, and because I'd already uh, had a, a another appointment out of town 
king. Uh, I called the judge and, and or his secretary at least, and, and she was able to excuse me from sitting on that jury. Uh, we might be excused from jury duty or traffic ticket or from doing our homework or, or, or uh, amen, but no believer uh, will be excused from the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, Hebrews 9.27 says, as it is appointed unto man uh, once to die, after this comes the judgment. Uh, this is an appointment uh, that we all must keep. Uh, tell your neighbor, I have an appointment with God. The second, the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, not only is it certain, but it's universal. Uh, we must all appear. Romans 14.10. Uh, it echoes this point. It says, for we shall all stand uh, before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, every human being uh, will stand in judgment before God. Uh, unbelievers uh, will stand at the great white throne judgment. Uh, believers will stand stand at the beam of sin. Now, if I had a choice in the matter, which I do because of how I live, I choose the judgment seat of Christ than the great white throne judgment. Y'all don't hear me. And so all here, when it says all, it's not referring to all people, but it's referring to all the redeemed people. Tap your neighbors and neighbor, I'm glad that I'm redeemed. Ah, come on. The third thing, quickly, about the judgment seat of Christ is that it is revealing. It's going to reveal some stuff. Paul says that we all must appear. He doesn't simply mean that we will be present. I want you to hear me because this is important. This word has a much sharper meaning than just to show up. A lot of people just show show up to church. Uh, they don't participate in worship. Uh, they just show up because uh, they feel they need to. Uh, but that's not how it's going to be. Uh, uh, it's a little bit deeper than that. Uh, when it says that we must stand uh, or appear, it translates from a Greek word, phanero, uh, uh, which means to make visible. It means to make manifest or to reveal. Y'all don't hear me. And so what this is saying is all of us who are Christians, all of us who are believers, we will be made manifest. We will not just appear or be present, but we will be laid bare before the judge judgment seed of Christ. I got a quote from Philip Hughes. Philip Hughes writes, we shall, we will be stripped of every outward facade of respectability and openly revealed in the full and true reality of our character. End quote. In other words, we can't hide from God. You can hide from people, but you can't hide from God. Are y'all with me, somebody? You can dress yourself up and look good and speak well, Let yet your core is rotten on the inside. You can hide that from people, but you can't hide it from God because we all must be laid bare before the judgment seat of Christ. Everything about our lives will be revealed before God. Y'all don't hear me. The Bible does not tell us that our lives will be revealed to the angels or to other believers. I don't think anything uh, will be displayed on the screen uh, for everyone to see. Uh, but everything will be revealed uh, 
by God to us. In other words, when I stand before God, my life will be exposed to me by God. God's going to show me everything about me that I should have let go of while I was alive. He's going to show me everything that's wrong that should have been made right. But make no mistake about it. He knows about us. Tell your neighbor that God knows everything about you. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 it says for the Lord does not see like man seeing for men look at the outward appearing look at how you dress and how you speak and your education but God tell somebody God looks at the heart he knows what you are from the inside I like Hebrews 4 verse 13 it says and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open of amen before him to whom we give an account uh, y'all don't hear me so at the beamer seed of God we amen God will not be impressed with how many honors we won he will not be impressed by our talents he will not be impressed by how much money we made he will not be impressed by how many degrees we earned or oh, what neighborhood we lived in what what kind of car we drove but rather God will be concerned with what we did with what we had y'all don't hear me he will be concerned with how we used the abilities and the resources that he gave to us that he entrusted to us you remember the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 one of the servants was left with ten talents or amount of money and made a good investment and got ten more another servant was entrusted with five talents and he too made a wise investment and received back another five the third one however you remember him don't you he hid his talent in the ground and God gave him back nothing to the first two servants the master said well done good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few I will make you rulers over many enter into the joy of the Lord that's a very good illustration of the beamer seat our master Jesus our Lord Jesus Christ he will hold us accountable for how we managed our gifts our talent some of y'all you allowed the devil I said you allowed the devil to captivate your mind and caused you amen to discredit the church and discredit God and you don't want to give to the church but I just rose to tell you if God blessed you you need to be a blessing to his work if God work with me if God come on if he allowed you or gave you some talent amen you ought to use that to his glory I heard some people say well Bishop I'm not 
I don't have time. I got to work. I got to do this. And I got to do that. But I just rose to let the church know that one day, some glad morning, what I want to hear is well done. Well done. Good. Faithful servant, enter in to the joy of the Lord. Tell your neighbor the joy of the Lord is my desire. The joy of the Lord is my aim. My aim, my desire, my determination is to please God. Pleasing God. God and not man for me to live. Wish I had somebody. Tell somebody that God will hold you accountable. Tell him God will hold you accountable. Watch this. Watch this. Let me let me just wrap this up real quick. The judgment seat of Christ is individual. It's about you and God. It's all, listen, it, it, no one, you're, at this point, you're not going to see anyone else even standing online. Amen. To be said, to be called next. It's just you and God. And this should be obvious, but, but notice that the Bible says each one will receive the things done in his body. Somebody say each one. Each one of us individually, we stand before God. And I can't stand with you. And you certainly can't stand with me. Pastors cannot appear for church members. Husbands cannot appear for, for wives. Wives cannot appear for, for, for husbands. Parents can't stand with children. There'll be no lawyers beside you. There'll be no advocate beside you. It's just you and God. So you can stay there and say, well, I don't know how to speak. Watch this. Fifth, judgment seat of Christ has a judge. Each of us will stand before Jesus and Jesus alone. It, it, it is not the judgment seat of my wife, even though a lot of y'all don't want to stand before the judgment seat of your wife. It is not the judgment seat of my children or my congregation, or, or my fellow uh, 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 pastors. You, you might not be as gracious as the Lord. And this is why I'd rather stand before God than stand before some of y'all. You know I'm telling the truth. Listen, none of us will be great judges. None of us will be great judges. Because we can't be just, we can't be fear. Uh, watch this. We, we would let our friends off and we'd persecute our enemies. You know I'm telling the truth. Hello? Only our Lord Jesus is the perfect judge because he alone, he alone knows the motives of our heart. The, the sixth thing, and I, I'm trying to hurry. The judgment seat of Christ is purposeful. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, it says, receive the things done at the Bema seat. We will all receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or whether bad. There's a purpose for it. In other words, Jesus will judge our works. Y'all don't hear me. Nobody says, but preacher, I'll be in heaven. What does it matter? You see, we are saved by faith, but we're judged by our works. Are you with me? This, this will be a time of reward and it'll be a time of rebuke. Amen. You'll be in heaven, but what will your reward be when you get there? Or will you be rebuked when you get there? We know that works doesn't save us. Hello. We're depraved sinners. Hello. We cannot do enough good works to make up for our sins. Did you know that? Oh, I wish I had some real people. If you tried right now to say, 
for the rest of my life I'm not going to sin and you and and not only do you mean what you say but you actually don't sin you still wouldn't make up for all the wrongs that you did we can't make up for it and and even watch this and this is this is why it's so bad even our good works sometimes is tainted by bad motives oh you know I'm telling the truth why y'all looking at me so strange? You know y'all will be partial to certain people. Hello? We are depraved sinner. We, listen, we're saved by grace alone through faith, not by our works. However, look at James 2.17. I want you to get this. Genuine salvation is evidenced by good works. In other words, when you're saved, you will do good works. You won't be able to help yourself, but do what is good. Thus, also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is what? Is dead. Are you with me? So being saved by yourself, and if it doesn't follow with a train of good works, it's dead. It means that you're not truly saved. Saved people do good works. Saved people love each other. Saved people help each other. I wish I had some real people. All right. Somebody said, we're not, we're not fully convinced, Bishop. All right. 2, 210 of Ephesians. It says, for we are his workmanships created in Christ. For what? What are we created for? Good works y'all see that which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them we should walk in what good works <laughs> y'all think you're getting away with stuff our works is evidence of our faith are y'all with me and these works are prepared for us we, we must do them because we're saved. And, and you know, we can't see a person's salvation, can we? Can you see my salvation? I can't see yours. You can only tell me that you're saved. The only way I can really see your salvation, watch this. We can see the fruit of your salvation. All right, look at this. Luke 4, uh, 6, 44. Every tree is known by its what? By its fruit. Now, I know there's some professional people. You can look at a leaf and, and tell me what kind of tree it is, right? Right? And some folks are so good, they can, they can look at a mango tree that's not bearing and tell you what kind of mango tree, or what type of mango it'll bear, right? Some folks can even get a piece of the leaf and just rub it together, smell it, and tell you what kind of mango it'll bear but by your fruit you will be known amen if you're saved you'll bear fruit what kind of fruit the fruit of good works all right watch this watch this and i promise i'm finished because i want you to get to get uh an idea of what the judgment seat of christ is the judgment seat of christ is just um in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10 it says, each one will be judged according to what he has what? Done, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Th this is not a judgment to determine if we're saved. Are y'all with me? All our sins have been paid for by Jesus. And that's why we give our lives to him. That's why we live for him. There is therefore now what? No condemnation to them who are what? in Christ to those who are justified by faith yet Jesus will rightly pass our works through the fire of judgment to determine the quality of our works tell somebody you gotta do good works you gotta love one another Listen, you cannot get away with saying well this is how I am because I'm from Spanish town 
or I'm from Linstead or, or wherever you're from. You can't get away with that. You've got to do what? Good works. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 11. It's my last scripture for you. I want you to see it. Y'all see it? Go to the next one, Zaria. There it is. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become what? I want you to pay attention. Each one's what? Work. Y'all see that? Will become clear for the day. What day? Amen. Standing before the judgment seat of for the day will declare your works. Because it will be revealed by what? Your works will be tried in fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Y'all see that? Go to the next verse. If anyone's work which he has built on, if it endures, meaning if the fire doesn't burn it up, he will receive a what? See, the judgment seat of Christ is to determine what? Rewards. Y'all see that? Does that make sense? If anyone's work, though, is burned up, he will suffer what? Loss. But he himself will still be in heaven. God's not going to kick you out of heaven. He himself will be saved, yet as through fire the gospel and i'm finished did you get anything from this today the gospel is the foundation of our lives we build on that by our works we've got to do good people of god we've got to do good are y'all with me our service to jesus it's got to be from a pure motive of worship. You know, the Lord laid on my heart yesterday. I was actually in bed and I had to get up real quickly because I know the 50th Psalm, but I had to go read it again. And get, have you ever been pressed by something, a, a scripture the Lord just laid on your heart? You got to go see it. I know, I know the scripture, Lord, but he says you got to go look at it again. Because I want to show you something. And one of the, I'm going to work on it. And one of these days I'm going to teach it to you. The 50th Psalm, it starts like this. The mighty God, even the Lord hath spoken and has called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. And he talked about uh, uh, God's uh, judgment shall be very tempestuous. And, and he talks about, and, and, and what, it, what God revealed to me from that scripture was the fact that God will judge us by our works. And watch this. What we do and, and, and our work, how many know that worship is work? How we worship God, he'll judge us by it. He'll judge us by it. That day will declare it, the word says. Our service to Jesus has got to be from a pure heart of worship and adoration. <laughs> Bible says it's gold and silver and precious stones. Our service has got to be from a pure heart. If our service comes from selfish ambition, then that's considered wood and hay and straw. That'll be what? That'll be burned up, right? And as our lives, listen, as the life at the judgment seat of Christ, when our lives are passed through the fire of God's judgment, only what will remain will be saved. 
And you know what's going to remain? Our general, uh, our, our, our obedience to God. That's what's going to remain. Amen. How, how obedient were you to God? How much did you, did you follow his word? How much did you follow his command? That is the gold and silver and precious stone. And Paul's focus was to be well-pleasing to God because Paul understood that one day in the future he would have to give an account for everything that's done in his body. And he will give that account at the judgment seat of Christ. Listen, first of all, if I had a choice between the judgment seat of Christ and the, white, the great white throne judgment, I'll choose the judgment seat of Christ, which is the choice I've made. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. I've decided that come hell or high water, I will walk with God. I will live for God. I will allow my good works to follow my salvation. Are you all with me? That's because I want to stand one day before the judgment seat and not the, the great white throne judgment will be for people who are already condemned for an eternal, an eternity in the lake of fire. They will stand before the great white throne judgment of God. Now that for me is out of the question. Do I have a witness? Do you follow what I'm saying so far? How can you, how can you ever think of existing without God, without living for God, without making sure that you are saved? I heard the word says, make your calling and your election sure. How can you even sleep at nights without being certain that one day, you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I wouldn't be able to smile anymore. I don't know about you. I wouldn't be able to live unless I knew that I'm in the arms of God. I'm, I'm, as a songwriter says, I'm, I'm sheltered in the arms of God. I can't, I can't, I can't breathe. I, I can't live. I can't move without that knowledge. Y'all don't hear me. So we've chosen the great white or the, the judgment seat of Christ. Now, when we stand before that judgment, our works will be tried in fire. Now, I'm living for God. My works have to follow my salvation. I've got to do good. I've got to do what's pleasing to God. I've got to love my neighbor. Come on in here. The scripture says, how can you say you love God who you have not seen and hate your brother who you do see? How dwelleth the love of God in you? Come on in here. Why are you all so quiet? Why are you all not happy? Is it that you're not sure? Can, can I give you some good news? The good news is, the good news is, have you given your life to Jesus? Let me see your hands. Have you surrendered to Jesus? The good news is God is a keeper. Y'all hear me? He can keep a fish fresh in salt water. Come on in here. Scripture says, uh, uh, when Jesus was praying, he says, Father, I pray, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but keep them from evil. And God is a keeper. I heard the word says, he is my shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. Come on in here. The Lord shall preserve me. He shall preserve my soul. He shall preserve my going out, my coming in from this day forth, even forevermore. Put your hands together. Give him some praise. I'm finished. Let me stop torturing y'all. Did, did y'all get anything from this? 
Amen. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. How many, how many after this word feel the need for prayer? Hmm? How many? Let me see your hands. All right, just a few of you. All right. Those of you who feel the need for prayer, stand. Stand, because I'm not going to force anyone. Y'all get, the, y'all get the word. I gave you the word. The decision is yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. How many need the Lord? I come to thee. Come on, sing that with me one more time if you mean it. I need the oh, I need the come on, do you need the Lord? Sing every hour. Come on, I need thee. Oh, bless me now. Do you need the Lord? Do you need the Lord? Do you really? Come on, whatever you need, come on. I need the oh. Oh, I wish I had some help. I need every hour, every hour. Of every minute of every day, I need you, Lord. I need thee. Oh, bless me oh, now. Bless oh, come on in here and sing from your spirit. Come on. I come to thee. Check this out. I need thee every hour. In joy or pain, come quickly, come quickly and abide. All life is vain. Come on, I need thee. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. Every hour I need your help. I need thee. I need your help. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I come. Thank you. To Bow your heads, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. If ever there's a time we need you, surely we need you now. We ask for your fresh anointing to fall upon your people today. We thank you, God, for your word. We we thank you for visiting us today, Lord. And we thank you for leaving such a powerful, anointed and appointed word with your people. Because we need the word of God. We need your word to survive. We need your word that our spirit man might grow and develop and be stronger. We need your word, God, to give us hope. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will bless your people. Bless us, Lord God, so that we can be obedient to your word. Bless us, Lord, so that we can understand your purpose and your calling in our lives. Bless us, Lord. 
that we might be able to walk with God in the beauty of holiness. Strengthen us, God. Keep us and cover us under your blood. Because we realize and we understand now that everything we do here on earth is an anticipation of what is to come. And so we live to please you, Lord. We walk to please you. We talk to please you. We, we live, we move to please you, God. Because one day, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Bless your people. Enrich our lives. And have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated real quick. Uh, we have uh, Evan Tabanor. Did I say that correctly? Evan Tabanor. Uh, who's that? Oh, there you are. Amen. God bless you. And uh, she says, I have no phone number. I have no email address. But I'm the mother of Minister Shane Martin. Oh, my goodness. God bless you. God bless you. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you. You're Shane's mom? For real? Oh, my goodness. You know, Minister Shane has talked about you for so long. Uh, every time, almost every time we talk, we talk about his mom. And he, I know he loves you very much. And I feel that I know you too. He talks about you so much. But God bless you. God bless you, Mom. We do appreciate you. We hope you were blessed today. Amen with the word of God. Minister Shane, y'all, why you do this to me? Sneak, sneaking up on me like this. Amen. But God bless you, my dear. Come on, put your hands together for Minister Shane's mom. How do you pronounce your first name? Evan, okay, I, that's what I thought. Evan Tabanor. That sounds like a real fancy name or a real fancy lady. But God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen, amen. And uh, no, no other first-time guests? No? All right, all right, all right. Uh, we also uh, want to say this real quickly. Um, in terms of our Bible study, how many have been enjoying the Bible studies? Y'all see my nails done? <laughs> the, the little baby, she just sat there. She did my nails this morning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Okay, so <laughs> I just noticed how colorful and sparkly they are. Okay, yeah, Shana. Oh, my goodness. She's... All right, uh, Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m., uh, also, our radio show uh, every Wednesday from 12 to 2 p.m. That's uh, great. You all need to listen to that if you have not yet done so. Download the church's app. Uh, go to the app store. Look for Grace Temple Life, and you'll find it. Uh, great things on that app. You can listen to us live. You can watch us live on the, on the, uh, for our streaming, and you can listen to us live on the radio station. So the app is good to get. Uh, Boot camp, if you want to uh, grow and, and learn more in, in terms of your walk with God, please see Minister Janice Dowdell. Janice, stand up, please. Where's Janice? Oh, there she is, Janice. Uh, there's Janice. Uh, please see her, and she will point you in the right direction for spiritual boot camp, all right, uh, for your growth group. Also... Uh, Youth Alive is on every first and, no, every second and third uh, Sunday of the month. And Sister Debbie, she's not here today, but Sister Debbie, she uh, uh, teaches that class. And, and we're talking about teenagers 13, between 13 and 17, I believe. So um, uh, if your kid is between that age, have them come to our Youth Alive every second and third Sunday, all right? Dance ministry, God's warriors will be meeting for rehearsal. Speak to uh, sis, Minister Janice Dowdell. Minister Janice, can you stand, please? 
Please see Minister Janice Dowdell again for if you want to uh, get get uh, uh, in the dance rehearsal, she'll point you in the right direction. All right, Janine, you can sit. God bless you. Back to school event. A back to school is going to be uh, on the 7th? The 7th. Back to school event is on the 7th of uh, next month. Next month uh, of August. In a couple of days, next month begins. Man, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. Today's 31st, right? Tomorrow, our next month begins. Man, the time is flying. August already. That's, that's, that's your birth month. That's Auntie Marlene's birth month, right? And Auntie Marlene, you want to tell them how old you'll be, Auntie Marlene? Tell them how old you'll be this. August 8th. Eighty-nine years old, <laughs> and she looks good, doesn't she? Amen, 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 Auntie. Can can I come to your birthday party too? All right, all right, all right. Amen. All right. God bless you. Let us all stand in Jesus' name. Uh, there are no birthdays this week, so let's all stand. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Minister Kisa, come and sing something for us as we leave today. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? Come on. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Plant my feet on higher ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Come on, everybody. God is good. Come on. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. How many believe it? Come on. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Pick me up. He pick me up. Turn me around. Black my feet. I'm on your ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Turn me around, let my feet on solid ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Come on, one more time. Come on. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. God is good. Amen, amen, amen. As we close today, I'm uh, led to ask if there's anyone who you're not saved, but you are thinking about giving your life to the Lord, and you're wondering how can I do it? What can I do to be saved? Scripture says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So if there's any in here today, any listening to the sound of my voice online, you want to give your life to the Lord 
It's real simple. But it's long lasting. I want you to just bow your head and invite him to come into your heart even now. And I will pray with you. Just repeat this prayer after me. If you want to give your life to the Lord, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. I am sorry for my sins. And I realize that I need you. I need a savior. Save me to the utmost. Deliver me from sin. Because one day I want to be in the number. I want to be standing before the judgment seat of Christ. Come into my heart today. I am sorry for my sins. Save me to the utmost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, if you've prayed that prayer, I want you to, uh, let's do it this way. I want you to come see me after church. If you pray that prayer you're here today, I want you to come see me and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer and I need Jesus in my life. If you're online and you prayed that prayer, I want you to email me at info, I-N-F-O, at gracetempleonline.com. Info, I-N-F-O, at gracetempleonline.com. All right, Father, as we go from this place, certainly not from your presence, go with us, protect us, cover us under your blood, and keep us by your power. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To our only wise God and Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. God's people say, amen. Another time, say amen. God bless you. Greet somebody before you leave in Jesus' name. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus love.